Alright, take six. Here's my GameCube. Just recently finished work on putting these lights in here. I'm going to try and make this quick because my iPod seems to want to screw up on me a lot. Things that I've done to it. I've installed all these lights. I've swapped out the power LED. I've installed these here after screwing up the front panel here. I've installed this light here from a German LED uh, Christmas light strand. And I also broke the drive open close sensor switch back there when I was first opening it up and I had to swap it out for this uh, switch right here that you can just barely see that came out of a CompUSA hard drive enclosure that I got from, that I brought with me from the States. Um, over here in Germany, I'm in the Army. Alright, so there's the operating system showing and just so you know it still uh, reads the memory cards just fine. I've got a uh, mod chip in here to let it read copied disks. It's a Xeno GC 2.0. Um, things I'm going to be going ahead and demoing are this right here. Very proud of this. SNES 9X GX. Flip the switch. And the disk begins to spin and recognize. And it's not cooperating. Alright, there we go. Now it cooperates. Alright, so we go ahead and uh, flip up here. There it is. Fire it up. And lo and behold, and what do we get? There it is. SNES 9XGX403. There's ROMs. And let's go play something. Let's see what's the first thing on the list. Uh, let's do something different. Let's go down here and play... Yeah, here we go. A hacked ROM. Just to show you how good this thing works. The emulator is running inside of the uh, system off of the disk and it's reading the game off of the disk each time and it works really, really well. I'm very happy with this. I would like to be able to get um, I'd like to be able to get NES emulation working. It's right now loading a uh, save game off of the memory card that I saved on there earlier just for the sake of experimentation. And there it is. Now then we're going to be moving right along to the next part. Legit disks. Legit disks still run. As you can see, drawing blood rain. It goes through its normal boot. Disk swapping also works. I tested this out with a uh, a copied version of my cheat disk, which is my action replay disk, right here. Works beautifully. It'll it'll disk swap between this and a uh, another burn disk, and also this and a legit disk. Um, I was testing that before, and it worked just fine. Now then, a straight out copied disk, Mega Man X Command Mission, just to show that that also works. Not just emulators on a burn disk, but full backups also. And here it is. Here it is running just fine. I'm going to go ahead and load up my save game that I've been playing on. If I can get through the million and one splash screens in any kind of timely fashion. And here we go. And there it is. Alright, so. Now, let's just go ahead and boot up that uh, Game Boy Advance hardware down there on the bottom. Just to show that that works too, also with a burned disc, not just with a legit copy of that disc. I honestly recommend that everybody who has a GameCube throw a mod chip in there, because it it just gets better. It's It's awesome. You can do so much with with a mod chip in there. Uh, you can save so much money just by buying the mod chip and doing the, the work yourself. 
Um, you'll have to get the opening tool so you can uh, so you can actually open the system up. But once you do, make sure you use a Dremel so you can um, file down those screws to a, a flathead screwdriver um, thing, so you, so you can use a, a flat screwdriver with it. Um, but anyway, so yeah, there it is, um, Amanda. Thank you for your input. Uh, it was actually very helpful with this. Um, things I'd like to point out before I go is that this is my botched faceplate. Now these lights are not glued to this, they're actually glued to the panel where these uh, controller ports are attached. Um, it's glued to that silicon. Uh, it's not glued to the plastic at all, so the plastic can actually be switched out and replaced. Um, but this plastic here what I'm, my, my future plans for it, because uh, it gave me an idea looking at it, and Amanda, this was actually something that you kind of put the idea in my head to do uh, indirectly. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the red one here as is. Uh, the yellow, I'm going to go ahead and carve that so it's a line. And then this one here, green and blue, I'm going to carve out these areas a bit more, and then I'm going to refill uh, I'm actually going to fill all these with uh, acrylic nail powder, um, which this is what these two are currently covered with right now to keep dust out, and also to fill in that plastic so I've got something to work with to keep it you know, structurally sound. Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'll carve these out, fill them back in, and then uh, with these two, I'm going to put some painter's tape on the back, and I'm going to carve a square with this one and then peel everything else off so I've got a square still on there. Carve a triangle on this one and peel everything else off so I've got a triangle still left there. And then I'll use some black nail polish, uh, this stuff actually, to uh, to paint around the rest of the acrylic. Um, and then after that's dried, I'll, you know, I'll put like two or three coats on there and then after that's dried I'll peel off the painter's tape from underneath the, uh, the uh, nail polish. I'll do that very carefully. And that way I'll have a green triangle here and a blue square here. So it'll be, you know, a dot for one, a line for two. So one side, or yeah, one side, three, uh, two sides, three sides, four sides. So one, two, three, four that way. Using shapes instead of just dots. Um, I think it'll be kind of interesting. And then beyond that, to further boost the aesthetics of it, because I want things to look pretty. I'll go ahead and get some uh, uh, gloss silver spray paint, which will end up having a matte effect on here, like kind of a, a shiny matte, which is actually kind of what I'm going for on this. And I will, um, I'll go ahead and take out the faceplate, use some painter's tape to cover up the parts that I don't want to get gunked up, and I'll go ahead and spray paint this uh, with a couple of very light coats, just enough to cover it up, just enough to cover up. Uh, the acrylic here and give the illusion that it's you know all one surface after sanding these down of course so that they're they're flush and uh, afterwards when it's off it'll all just be shiny and matte and look like all one surface and then when you turn it on you'll have lights shining in from the back um, which I think will be a very very pretty effect very interesting thing to do um, but anyway so that's my uh, plan for the future um, electrically the GameCube is as I wanted it to be, so I'm actually very, very happy with the results. Um, thank you for watching. Have a good day.